It's my pleasure having you on our civic education class today. Welcome to our class. We are still on our democratic series. The last class we took, we discussed what democracy is. We saw democracy as a government for the people by the people. And we saw that the um, democracy has to do with giving power to the masses, giving power to the citizens. And they are the lords. Those who are put in position are to serve them. And so you and I have a part to play to make a democratic process complete. Today we are going to identify democratic institutions in Nigeria and the roles they play. I'm going to talk about four institutions that plays a big role in a democratic setting. Welcome to the class. If you've not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for subscribing. If you like what we do here, give us a thumbs up. Go below the comment box and let us interact there. Do you have any question? Do you want us to cover any topic? It will be my pleasure to do that. So please, tell me below the comment box. So let's dive into our class for today. What are some of these institutions that plays a big role in a democratic setting? We have four. We have the INEC, we have the political parties, pressure groups, then the arms of government. What does INEC mean? INEC means the independent or, let's remove the e, D, sorry, Independent National Electoral Commission. Independent National Electoral Commission, I for independent, N for national, E for electorate, uh, then uh, C for commission. As INEC. Now I'm going to discuss each of these one with the roles they play because it's say identify democratic institutions in Nigeria and roles. What are the roles that the national uh, independent national electoral commission carry out? They are an independent body. They carry out functions that help to run a free and fair electoral uh, system. Now, some of, the, uh, well, some of the things they do is one, they register political parties. I am talking about the rules. I'm taking them one at a time and then talking about the rules. They register um, political parties. That's one. During election, they provide electoral materials like ballot paper, stamps, and whatever is required to run a smooth election. They put together the staff that will coordinate the election. They bring in security to the citizens who are coming out to vote. They collect election results and declare winners, call results. Now, I have mentioned five roles they play. I said one, they register political parties. Two, they provide security for those who want to vote. Three, they provide electoral materials for for people who are coming out to vote. Like we have ballot boxes, ballot uh, papers, stamps, and all that is required in a voting center. They give security to those who are to uh, come out and vote. They collect election results and declare who the winner is. They are an independent body that carries out all these functions to make sure that election is carried out in a free and fair setting. Okay? So that's the role of the Electoral Commission. It is a commission in Nigeria that oversees the electoral system of the country. And I've told you their roles. The roles they play. Now we go to the second point. Political parties. I told you in the first one that INEC, what do they do? They register political parties. So what is a political party? They are a group of individuals who have common ideology and who are ready to come out to contest for an election. This group of individuals that have common ideology come together under an umbrella of a party. They choose their name like we have in the APC, the uh, PDP, and the host of others who have many political parties, many, okay? 
And so when they come together, they pull themselves together, they choose their candidates that will be running for an election, the different posts they are going to choose, the different posts individuals are going to run for, they conduct their election, if they have more than one candidate for a particular position, they do a primary. Whoever wins in a primary election is taken as the main candidate that will run for a particular pre uh, position. Let's say the presidency, the governorship, House of Assembly members, local government chairman. Whoever um, emerge winner in the primary that is organized by these political parties that have an ideology will stand as a candidate that will represent them together with other political parties that will be their opponents. So political parties, it's a registered um, party by EMEC, a group of persons who have a common ideology of going into governance to represent the masses. That's political parties. And we have different, uh, type of, uh, uh, different names for each of these parties. And so a group of individuals that have an ideology form a party, another group form another party, and so we have different names they have chosen to represent themselves. What are their roles? One, they conduct primary election. Two, they, 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 they have um, an ideology. The manifesto they are ready to defend. Three, they choose their candidates wisely. Four, they register their um, political party with INEC. And so once INEC gives them an approval, they are already a political party. And then they choose their name. That's the rule. They choose their name. They register their party with INEC. They choose their candidate by running primary election for their candidate and see who emerges winner. They make sure they did and pick the best candidates. And then they go on rally to create awareness of who they are. They go on campaign, they go, on, um, they go out there to create awareness. Let people know what they are out for. Prepare their manifesto. That's what they do. Alright? Then, we have another pressure groups. Alright, so we have seen the roles of political parties. We say they create awareness to the public to know about them. They prepare their manifestos. They register their political party. They run their primaries. They choose their best candidates. That's the role of political parties. Then pressure groups. Pressure groups play a very big role in a democratic setting. They are an institution that actually play a role. During independence, this group actually played a big role. In our society for today, they are still playing a very mighty role. How? Pressure groups are a group of individuals who have the interest of the public, uh, of the general public at heart, who are ready to bring those in government into account. They are ready to make the government be aware of what the public actually needs. They're a pressure group because all of them come together to protect the interests of the citizens. They make sure that citizens' rights are not trampled on. So what are the roles of these pressure groups? Their roles is like a watchdog. They are out there to watch what the government is doing and correct where they are doing wrong. They are out there to agitate for the needs of the public or the citizens. They are out there to protect the interests of their group. They are out there to work for the interests of the nation to advance it forward. So pressure groups, they are really, um, their major work is like a watchdog. They are ready to make sure the government is accountable. They make, they make sure the government is doing what they ought to. They make sure that the government carry out the activities as they have manifested in their manifesto. 
they protect the interests of the citizens. They protect the interests of its group. They work as active members or activists to bring the government into accountability. That's for pressure groups. Then the arms of government. We have three arms of government that makes a democratic setting runs better. The executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. Each of these ones have their function in your government class. One of my teacher took that and he told you the different forms or the functions of each of these arms of government. Now we get through the channel, you will find that government class where we discuss the judiciary, the executive, and the legislature. Now, the, le the judiciary makes sure there is a check and balance in the system to bring whoever goes wrong into book. The executive makes sure that um, activities in the governance are carried out effectively and efficiently well. Okay, so each of these arms of government make governance better. One, their roses, they act as a check and balance for each of the arms. Two, they play a big function because each of them carry out their role to make sure that the goals and objective of governance is met. The third one is they work independently on their own in a real democratic setting to make sure everything is at the balance. So all of these institutions have actually made a democratic system run smoothly. INEC, political parties, pressure groups, and the arms of government. There may be other ones, other um, institutions that have actually helped. Many of them are still out there. Many of them that forms and that comes under pressure groups. These pressure groups have many names. There are different names they call themselves. And so they are formed in small groups, but their major objective is to make sure that the um, public is well represented, the citizens are well represented. So we have seen institutions that have helped in making a democratic setting run smoothly. In our next class, we will talk other things in our democratic process. And that will be another part, which is part three of democratic setting. I hope you find value for the class. Watch our part one of democracy and the, the second one on the institution and their rules. I took them one at a time and then explained the institution. So please go over them. It was my pleasure having you. I will see you in our next class where we discuss other issues. Thank you for being part of my class. I will see you then.